This video is brought to you by Ultium Designer. Hi boys and girls and welcome to the Arduino course. In this video I'm going to help you how to get started with Arduino. I'm going to cover 10 examples and in these examples I will cover the most commonly used electronics components. But before I explain anything first I would like to talk about the Arduino boards. I have these three different types of Arduino boards. This one is Arduino Uno, this one is Arduino Nano and this one is Arduino Pro Micro. Let me tell you, these are not the only Arduino boards if you open the Arduino IDE. Go to the tools menu. And then to board you will see a long list of the Arduino boards. So technically you can start with any of these boards but what I suggest is start with a board that's easy to use. Like for example, take a look at these three Arduino boards, which one is more users friendly. Think about it, I gave you 5 seconds. You are right, Arduino Uno is more users friendly and it's easy to use because it's bigger in size, all the pins are clearly labeled, it has female headers for connecting sensors and breakout boards and it also has this DC female power jack for connecting DC adopters. Now look at the Arduino Nano board, it doesn't have the female headers, the power jack and it's smaller in size and same is the Arduino Pro Micro but it's a little bit on the intermediate level side because in the Arduino Pro Micro you will have to burn a bootloader and then you can use it as a normal Arduino board. So technically if you have any of these boards or even if you have the Arduino Mega you can follow this Arduino course. What I'm trying to explain is as a beginner you need to start with something that is super easy so that you don't get discouraged. So if you have not purchased the Arduino board then get yourself Arduino Uno and if you can afford also get yourself an Arduino Nano. Let me also tell you all the programs that we can run on the Arduino Uno we can also run them on the Arduino Nano without any issues. Throughout this video I will keep switching between the Arduino Uno and Arduino Nano boards. I will also use these Arduino development boards to save some time. This development board is the basic one and its power supply is based on the 705 voltage regulator. I'm going to recommend this board for the absolute beginners because it's easy to solder through hole type components. But if you have some electronics background and you know how to solder SMD components then I'm going to recommend make yourself this development board. I designed this board in Ultium Designer. Anyway, you can see this board has the headers for interfacing input and output devices. It has an OLED display module, a LoRa transceiver module for monitoring sensors and controlling loads over a long distance in the range of 1 to 5 kilometers, a 5 volt buzzer relays and a powerful regular 5 volt and 3 amps power supply. So I don't have to manually wire up the most basic components when I'm making and testing new projects. So if you want to make this development board you can watch my video or you can purchase a ready-made Arduino development board. It will speed up your Arduino learning. Anyway right now I'm not going to talk about the technical specifications because it's something that you will automatically learn and more in the beginning I don't want to scare you with technical stuff and you know it's always quite boring. So let's just start with how to use this beautiful piece of hardware so without any further delay let's get started. These are the Arduino boards based on the 80 Mega 328 microcontroller. It doesn't matter if you see this dual inline package type microcontroller or the SMD quad plate package. These are preloaded with the Arduino Uno 16 megahertz bootloader which allows us to program these controllers using the Arduino IDE. Anyway, let's just focus on the Arduino Uno as it's bigger in size and you might be able to see things clearly. You can see this button next to the USB port. This is the reset button. This button allows you to manually reset the Arduino. So when you press this button, the board will restart means the code will start running from the beginning. This type B USB port on the Arduino Uno serves multiple purposes and it requires a type A to type B USB cable to connect it to your computer. This USB port is used to program the Arduino board simply connect it to your computer using the USB cable and then use the Arduino IDE integrated development environment to write, compile and upload your Arduino code to the board. This USB port also serves as a power supply 
when you connect it to the computer via USB, it draws power from the USB connection. And this way you can run your Arduino projects without the need for an external power supply. But you will have to make sure the power requirements of your project are within the USB power limits. Otherwise, it will damage the USB port on your PC or laptop. This USB port also allows the users to establish serial communication between the computer and Arduino. For this, we have serial monitor in the Arduino IDE to communicate with the Arduino and debug our projects by sending and receiving data. Apart from the debugging, with the help of this USB port, you can send data from the Arduino to desktop applications designed in VB.NET, C Sharp, Processing, MATLAB, etc. You can check my playlist on the desktop applications designing for the Arduino. The Arduino board also has a DC power jack which is also known as the barrel jack connector. It allows you to power up the Arduino board using an external power source with a voltage between 7 volts and 20 volts. The board has a 5 volt regulator that converts input voltages greater than 5 volts. If the voltage is less than 7 volts, the Arduino board may become unstable and if the voltage is greater than 13 volts, the voltage regulator may overheat and damage the board. So the recommended range is 7 to 12 volts. You can use a 9 volt battery, a 3S LiPo or lithium ion battery or a 12 volt dry or lead as a battery or a 12 volt wall adapter etc. For this course, you don't need an external power supply. But since I'm explaining things, so in some examples, I will use the external power supply just to make sure you get the idea how to externally power up the Arduino Uno and Arduino Nano. You can see on the Arduino Nano board, there is no DC power jack, but we can still power it up using an external power supply. In a few seconds, I'm going to explain this. We have these power pins clearly labeled with 5 volts, reset, 3.3 volts, 5 volts, ground, ground, and VN. The 5 volts are used to power up the majority of the components on the Arduino board including the microcontroller, sensors and other breakout boards. The 5 volt regulator on the Arduino board is a 5 volt linear voltage regulator. The current handling capability of this voltage regulator depends on several factors including whether you are using the original Arduino board or the clone. The one I have is not the original Arduino board. The official Arduino board uses the NCP11754 volt regulator and according to the datasheet its maximum continuous output current can range from approximately 800 milliamps to 1 ampere. However, this is just the maximum specified value under certain conditions. Let me make it simple for you. If you are using sensors and breakout boards that draw current in the range of let's say 500 milliamps to 600 milliamps then you can use the onboard 5 volts. But if you're planning on using multiple servos or stepper motors or a GSM module etc then you will need to use an external 5 volt regulated power supply which can handle more current. So this is the reason I built myself this Arduino Nano development board because it has this 5 volt and 3 amps power supply which is more than enough to power up multiple servos, GSM modules etc. So I don't need to use an external 5 volt power supply Anyway, for this Arduino course, the onboard 5 volt is more than enough. The Arduino board also has a 3.3 volt voltage regulator, which provides a regulated 3.3 volts output. This voltage level is useful when you have components that require 3.3 volt instead of 5 volts. We have a total of three ground points too on this side and the third one on this side. So you can take a ground connection from any of these three points. VN is the voltage input. You can also connect your external power supply over here. All you need is to connect the voltage wire to the VN and ground wire to any of these ground pins. This is how I did it on this development board. I have connected the 5 volt and 3 amps power supply output voltage and ground wires to the VN and ground pins on the Arduino Nano. The Arduino Uno board has a total of 6 analog input pins which are labeled as 0 through A5. These analog input pins allow the Arduino to read analog voltage values from external sensors and devices. Each analog input pin can measure voltage in the range of 0 to 5 volts because Arduino Uno is based on a 5 volt compatible controller board. 
Well, the Arduino Nano has a total of eight analog input pins, which are labeled A0 through A7. So any program that is written for the Arduino Uno will also run on the Arduino Nano. But if you have written a code for the Arduino Nano in which you have used the analog pins A6 and A7, then that program won't run on the Arduino Uno because on the Arduino Uno A6 and A7 pins are not available. Anyway, the A4 and A5 pins both on the Arduino Uno and Arduino Nano are also used as the I2C bus. A4 is the SDA and A5 is the SCL. I2C bus has the advantage of connecting multiple I2C supported sensors, displays and other breakout boards using only two pins A4 and A5 on the Arduino. So if you're working on a project where you need to connect multiple sensors and breakout boards, then you can purchase the sensors and boards that supports I2C communication. Then this way you can save yourself a lot of IO pins on the Arduino. Arduino Uno has a total of 14 digital input output pins starting from 0 to pin 13. These pins serve various purposes and can be used for both digital input and output operations. Out of these 14 pins, 6 are PWM pins. Pin 0 and 1 are also labeled as RX and TX. Arduino Uno and Arduino Nano has only one serial port and you can use this for establishing serial communication with the PC and you can also connect devices like GSM, GPS and Bluetooth modules etc. that support serial communication. Let me also tell you as this is the default serial port which is also used for uploading the program so if any device is connected to these pins then you won't be able to upload the program unless you turn off that device or remove the TX and RX wires. Once you have uploaded the program then you can reconnect the wires or you can turn on that device. Now you might be thinking what if I want to use two or three serial communication supported devices like GSM, GPS and Bluetooth all at the same time. Well you can do it. You can use the software serial library for defining multiple serial ports. I have already covered this in my previous tutorials or you can get yourself Arduino Mega that has multiple serial ports. Next we have pins 2 and 3. We can use these pins as simple input output pins. You can see this symbol it means pin 3 can also be used as the PWM pin. Besides this these pins can also be used as external interrupt pins. These pins are capable of generating interrupts to the microcontroller when certain events occur such as a change in voltage level or when a rising or falling edge is detected. Similarly pins 4 and 5 can be used as simple input output pins. You can also use pin 5 as the PWM pin besides this these pins have T0 and T1 timers. Arduino Uno also has one SPI channel available on pins 10, 11, 12 and 13. And let me also tell you it has a 16 megahertz quartz crystal oscillator. The flash memory is 32 kilobytes out of which 0.5 kilobytes is used by the bootloader. SRAM is 2 kilobytes dynamic memory for data storage and EEP ROM is 1 kilobytes. This is a non-volatile memory for storing data. I think I have talked much about the Arduino board and now we can start with the Arduino IDE. Ultim Designer is the world's most trusted PCB design system. Ultim Designer enables engineers to effortlessly connect with every facet of the electronics design process. Over 35 years of innovation and development focused on a truly unified design environment makes it the most widely used PCB design solution. With Ultim Designer, you can create PCB designs with an intuitive and powerful interface that connects you to every aspect of the electronics design process. Route it your way through any angle, tune for the delay, push, slide and walk around faster than ever. Easily work together with your mechanical team and forget about the days of swapping design files. Every design change stays in sync between Ultium Designer and Solidworks, PTC Crew, Autodesk Inventor, Autodesk Fusion 360 or Siemens NX. Interact and collaborate with mechanical designers like never before in a photorealistic 3D design environment. One of the best things about Ultium Design is that you can share your designs with your team members using Ultium 365. They can check your design, leave comments and if there are any issues, they can fix them from anywhere in the world. Ultium Designer also uses the world's fastest component search engine, Octopart, 
so you won't have any difficulty in searching for components. Links to the Ultium Designer, Ultium 365 and Octopart are given in the description. The Arduino IDE Integrated Development Environment is the official software provided by Arduino to program and develop applications for Arduino boards. It is a user-friendly development environment that simplifies the process of writing, compiling and uploading code to Arduino microcontrollers. You can also use the Arduino IDE for programming ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth Mario, ESP8266, Raspberry Pi Pico and STM32 microcontroller boards etc. To get started with the Arduino IDE, you will need to download and install it from the official Arduino website. I have added link in the description. For now, forget about these buttons and menus because you will practically see everything in action. Anyway, when you open the Arduino IDE, you will see these two functions, the white setup function and the loop function. White means these functions have no return types and as you can see the parentheses are empty which means they are not taking any arguments as the input. The code inside the setup function is executed only once when the Arduino is turned on or when it resets. The purpose of the setup function is to set up the initial configuration and initialization of the Arduino board and its peripherals before the main program execution begins. So the setup function typically contains code that initializes various settings and states for pins, sensors, communication modules and other components used in the Arduino project. It's just like an introduction. We tell the controller which pin is going to be used as the input and which pin is going to be used as the output. If I want to use the serial communication then I will have to activate it first and then I will set the baud rate. Same thing applies to the I2C, SPI, etc. The code that's meant to be executed repeatedly is placed in the loop function. In this function, you can include the main logic of your program, read sensors, control outputs, and perform other tasks that need to be repeated in a loop as long as the Arduino board is powered on or until the program is interrupted. Enough with the talking, and now let's go ahead and start with our first LED blinking project. In this first example, we are going to control the onboard LED connected to the digital pin 13. Arduino Nano also has this LED connected to the same pin 13. So for this first example, you don't need to connect an external LED. So let's go ahead and connect the Arduino board to the laptop. I have written these three programs which have the same purpose of blinking the onboard LED. So let's go ahead and start with the first program. This is the simplest LED blinking code. It follows all the rules. Inside the setup function, we tell the controller to set the digital pin 13 as the output because LED is an output device. And then in the loop function, we turn it on and off. Isn't it so rude? It feels like if you call someone for a certain job and when he arrives and you don't even bother about asking his name or introducing him to the manager etc and you just tell him start working the same thing is happening over here so you're not supposed to write a program like this now you might be thinking why imagine you have used multiple LEDs for creating some cool animations and for some reasons you decide to change the pin numbers however those pins are used all over the code and what if those LEDs have different colors and you want to control a specific color LED? So programs like these don't make any sense. Let's take a look at another program. This is the same program, but this time I have properly defined the pin. I call it device. Now, if I want to change the pin number, I can change it over here. But still, this program is not good. You know, this program is for blinking the onboard LED because I told you. What if I ask someone what is the purpose of this code, his first question would be what is this device because this device could be anything. It could be a relay, it could be a buzzer or it could be a motor or something else. So what I'm trying to explain is give it a meaningful name and add a little bit of information. Let's take a look at another program and you will get the idea. Your program should be like this because it's easy to read this program. If I send it to someone who knows about the Arduino programming in just five seconds, he will completely understand the purpose of this program because everything is well commented. So let me explain this code and the rules. Let's start with comments. Comments are optional and it's totally up to you whether you want to use them or not. 
but it's a good programming practice to add comments in your programs because it makes your programs more understandable. We have two types of comments, single line comments and multi line comments. The one on the top is a multi line comment. To add a multi line comment, you simply write the forward slash followed by an asterisk and then write anything you want. To end a multi line comment, simply write the asterisk and forward slash. So anything written in between these is completely ignored by the compiler. To write a single line comment, simply put two forward slashes and start typing anything you want. It has nothing to do with the actual code. While defining a pin number or any variable, you need to follow some rules. Number one, no special characters are allowed in the beginning of a variable name. Number two, no numbers are allowed in the beginning. Number three, no spaces are allowed. Number four, you can use an underscore as the space. Number five, a variable name should be unique. You are not allowed to use a single name for multiple pins and you can't define a single variable name with different data types. Think about yourself, your name is unique among your brothers and sisters. What if all had the same name? So a variable name should be unique. Number six, it should be meaningful as I'm controlling an LD. So I define pin 13 as LD. I could also write it as onboard underscore LD. So what I'm trying to explain is select a name that is unique and meaningful. So after defining the pin next in the setup function, we will need to tell the controller whether we want to use it as an input for monitoring some kind of sensor or as an output to control something. We know that LED is an output device, so we are going to set it as output. And for this, we use the pin mode function. This is the built-in function. You can see it has a different color. You're not allowed to use a built-in function as a user-defined function. And you might know it's a case sensitive language. So the M should be capital. You have to use the built in functions and all the keywords as it is. You're not allowed to change even a single character. Otherwise it will generate an error. The actual code, which is supposed to run repeatedly is kept inside the loop function to turn on or off any I open on the Arduino we use the digital write function. It's also a built-in function and it takes two arguments is the input, the pin and the command high or low. Then there is a delay of three seconds. Then I have turned off the LED and uh, again, there is a delay of one second. Now to check for any errors, click on the verify button. It will compile the code for you. You can see there are no errors. While the Arduino Uno board is connected to the PC, go to the tools menu. Then to board and select your desired Arduino board. In my case, I'm going to select Arduino Uno. Again, go to the tools menu and this time select the communication port. Now you can click on the upload button. Now let's move on to the next example. In this second example, we are going to control these 2.5 volt and 10 milliamps LEDs. Controlling an external LED is just like controlling the onboard LED. Now you might be thinking, then why am I explaining this? Well, I want to explain how to use other IO pins, how to define and use multiple pins at the same time, and how to calculate the current limiting resistor. 
The Arduino Uno and Arduino Nano both are 5 volt compatible controller boards, which means 5 volt are available on its I.O. pins when turned on. So if you will directly connect these 2.5 volt LEDs with the Arduino, these will burn out in a second. So how to control a 2.5 volt LED with a pin that has 5 volts? Well, we will have to use a current limiting resistor and for this we will have to perform some calculations. So let's do it. The LED voltage is 2.5 volts and the LED current is 10 milliamps. Voltage on the Arduino pin is 5 volts. So using the V is equal to IR formula, we can find the resistor value which is 250 ohms. Don't select a resistor with a value less than 250 ohms. Go for a slightly bigger value. This will increase the LED lifespan. The LED won't heat up. I always select 330 ohm resistor. It works perfectly. Connect the cathode legs of the LEDs together and then connect it to the ground pin on the Arduino board. Connect the anode legs of the LEDs to the digital pins 2 and 3 on the Arduino through these 330 ohms current limiting resistors. You can follow this circuit diagram. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. This program is quite similar to the program used in example number one. The only difference is that this time I'm using two LEDs connected to digital pins two and three. Since I'm using the same color LED, so I named them LD1 and LD2. And if I was using different color LEDs, for example, red and green, then I could also call these LEDs as R underscore LED and G underscore LED. Anyway, the pins are defined. In the white surf function, I have set both the pins as output and in the white loop function, I'm simply turning on and turning off these LEDs. Now let's move on to the next example. In this third example, I'm going to explain how to read a digital signal on any I.O. pin on the Arduino. A digital signal may be 0 or 1 and you should be able to read both the types because there are different types of sensors in the market. Some sensors give one at the output while others give zero. Anyway, you will get the idea as we cover different examples. For now, let's concentrate on how to read a button click. Now in this example, I'm going to use Arduino Nano, but you can also use Arduino Uno. One side of the button is connected to the ground and the other side of the button is connected to the digital pin too. On the Arduino, we don't need to add a pull-up resistor because it already has. We only need to enable it, which I will explain in a minute. Anyway, this time I added an LED to the digital pin 5. You can follow this circuit diagram. The power supply on the left side is optional. If you are using your laptop or PC to power up the Arduino, then there is no need for an external power supply. But if you want to externally power up your Arduino board, then you can build yourself this basic 5 volt regulator power supply based on the 7805 voltage regulator. Let me tell you, this is not a powerful power supply. You can only use it with basic sensors and 5 volt relays. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. I started off by defining the pins for the LED and push button exactly the same way as previously explained. In white zero function, I set the LED as output and I set the button as input. When connecting a sensor or a button to a pin configured with input underscore pull up, the other end should be connected to the ground. In the case of a simple switch, this causes the pin to read high when the switch is open and low when the switch is pressed. This is exactly what I did. The two legs of my push button are connected to the ground and pin 2 on the Arduino. In the while loop function, I have added two conditions to check if the button is pressed or the button is open. To read a digital signal on any I.O. pin on the Arduino, we use the digital read function. The first condition means check if a low signal is available on the pin 2. So if it reads a low signal, then it means the button is pressed. And if the button is pressed, then we tell the controller to turn on the LED. And when the button is released or when the button is open, simply turn off the LED. So this is how you can read a digital sensor. Anyway, I have already uploaded this program and now let's watch the LED and push button in action. Now let's move on to the next example. 
In this fourth example, I'm going to explain how to read an analog sensor and send its value to the serial monitor. So in this example, we are going to cover two things, how to read an analog sensor and how to use serial communication. For the demonstration purposes, I'm going to use this potentiometer as the analog sensor. If you want, you can also use an LDR or any other analog sensor. The leftmost and rightmost legs of the potentiometer are connected to the Arduino 5 volt and ground whereas the middle leg of the potentiometer is connected to the analog pin A0. You can follow this circuit diagram. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. I simply started off by defining the pin and a variable. To activate serial communication between Arduino and a computer or any other serial communication supported device, we use the serial dot begin function and inside the parentheses we add the baud rate. For this example, I have selected the standard baud rate of 9600. The baud rate specifies the speed at which data is transmitted in bits per second. You can check the list of common baud rates in the serial monitor. Analog read is a function used to read analog voltage values from an analog input pin on the Arduino board. Arduino boards have several analog input pins labeled with A0, A1 and so on. These pins can be used to read analog signals such as those generated by sensors, potentiometers or other analog devices. The analog read function takes one argument which is the number of the analog input pin you want to read from. The argument should be a number representing the pin's analog input number. For example, to read from analog pin A0, you should use analog read A0, but in my case, I have defined it with the name part. So, it reads the potentiometer and stores the value in a variable part value, and then using the serial.println function, we send the value to the serial monitor. I've already uploaded this program, so let's go ahead and open the serial monitor. You can see change in the value as I rotate knob of the potentiometer. Exactly the same way you can read a joystick or an LDR, etc. Now let's move on to the next example. If you have been using Ultium Designer for creating schematics and designing your PCBs and you don't know about Ultium 365, then let me tell you about it. Ultium 365 lets you store projects in the cloud with all the documents and components you might need to complete all your tasks. To unlock all of the functionality of Ultium 365, you must first connect to your workspace, a separate environment where all your data exists. After logging into your account, you can access all of the features of the Ultium 365 platform. Let me show you how to create a workspace. Click on the Not Signed In drop-down button and click on the sign in. Click on the register an account. It's just a two steps process into your email ID or you can also register with Gmail and Facebook. Once you complete the registration, then come back to Ultium Designer, enter your email ID and password, check the sign in automatically box and click on the sign in button. And your Ultium 365 workspace will activate. Click on manage if you want to change your password, your information and you can also write about your experience and projects. And finally, you can click on the save button. I will share more tips and tricks with you in my upcoming videos. I have added links to the Ultium Designer, Ultium 365 and Octopod, the world's fastest component search engine. In example number 5, I am going to explain how to control the brightness of an LED using a potentiometer. For this example, you can use any PWM pin on the Arduino. In my case, I'm using the digital pin 5, which is also a PWM pin. Let me explain the connections. Potentiometer is still connected to the analog pin A0. I explained this in example number 4. And the LED is connected to pin 5 through this 330 ohm current limiting resistor. I'm sure you know how to calculate its value. If you don't know, then you should watch example number 2. Anyway, you can follow this circuit diagram and now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. I defined the pins and variables using the same rules as I explained in example number one. Anyway, in this example, the instructions are pretty much the same except these two instructions. MAP function is a useful function that is used to scale or map a value from one range to another. It takes an input value and scales it proportional to a new range. 
This function is particularly handy when you want to convert sensor readings or other values to a different scale that is more suitable for your application. You know the duty cycle should be between 0 and 255 so that's why I converted the potentiometer value from 0 to 1023 into 0 to 255. You can use the same technique for setting the motor speeds and you can also use this technique for expressing the sensor values in percentage. So it depends on your logic how you use it. Unlike the analog read function that is used for reading analog values, analog write function is used for generating analog like output on certain pins. However, it's important to note that not all pins on the Arduino board supports PWM pulse width modulation. On most Arduino boards, the pins that support PWM are marked with this symbol next to the pin number. The analog write function takes two arguments. The first argument is the pin number you want to generate the PWM pulse width modulation signal on. And the second argument is the value of the duty cycle. The duty cycle value should be between 0 and 255. 0 means fully off and 255 means fully on. I've already uploaded this program and now let's go ahead and control the LED brightness. Now let's move on to the next example. In example number 6, I'm going to explain how to print a text message on an I2C supported 16 into 2 LCD. This is the most commonly used LCDs and you are going to need this LCD and your upcoming projects for printing text messages and sensor values and for creating menus etc. Anyway, this is the I2C version of the 16 into 2 LCD because it has this driver on its big side so you don't need to connect a lot of wires you only need to use four wires all the four pins are properly labeled with ground vcc sda and scl simply connect the vcc and ground pins to the arduino 5 volt and ground pins and connect the sda and scl pins to the arduino a4 and a5 pins a4 is the sda and a5 is the scl i have already explained this it also has this blue color potentiometer to control the LCD contrast or brightness. Anyway, you can follow the circuit diagram. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. Before you start the programming, first of all, make sure you have installed the Liquid Crystal Library. For this, simply copy this name. Then go to the Sketch menu. Then include library and click on the Manage Libraries. Paste the library name. You can see I have already installed this library and you also need to install the same library. So I start off by adding the liquid crystal underscore i2c.h header file. This line initializes an instance of the liquid crystal underscore i2c class named LCD. The constructor takes three arguments. 0x27 is the I2C address of the LCD module. The specific address may vary depending on the configuration of your LCD module. You can find the I2C address by running an I2C scanner sketch which you can download from the article. 16 is the number of columns in the LCD and 2 is the number of rows in the LCD. In the white setup function, the lcd.init function initializes the LCD by sending the necessary commands over the I2C bus. The lcd.clear function clears the LCD screen making sure it's empty or blank. The lcd.bakelight function turns on the bakelight if the LCD module has it. If your LCD module doesn't have a bakelight support then this command will not affect the display. The lcd.setCursor function is used to select one of the two rows and 16 columns. The first number is used to select the column. In my case, I have selected column 1. The index starts from 0 all the way to 15. The second number is used to select the row. 0 means first row and 1 means second row. In my case, I have selected the first row. 
Now after selecting the column and row, next we use the lcd.print command to write text on the LCD. Make sure you use double quotes for printing string messages. If you want to display numbers and variables data on the LCD, then there is no need to use the double quotes. Just write the variable name or number and that's it. I have already uploaded this program and now let's watch the I2C supported 16 into 2 LCD in action. Now let's move on to the next example. In this seventh example, I'm going to explain how to use an I2C supported SSD 1306 or LED display module with the Arduino. For the demonstration purposes, I'm going to print the potentiometer value on the OLED display module. Potentiometer is still connected to the analog pin A0. The VCC and ground pins of the OLED display module are connected to the Arduino 3.3 volt and ground pins, whereas the SDA and SCL pins of the OLED display module are connected to the Arduino analog pins A4 and A5 respectively. A4 is the SDA and A5 is the SCL. You can follow this circuit diagram. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. For the SED1306 or LED display module, first you will need to install these libraries and then you can use these header files. For this, simply go to the sketch menu, then to include library and click on the manage libraries. Type Adafruit underscore GFX in the search box and install it. As you can see, I have already installed this library. Next, search for the Adafruit underscore SD1306 and install it. As you can see, I have also installed this library. Then we start by defining the width and height of the OLED display module. The type of the OLED display module I'm using doesn't have a reset pin, so that's why the OLED reset is set to minus one. This line initializes an instance of the Adafruit underscore SD1306 class named display. The constructor takes four arguments. Potentiometer is connected to the analog pin A0 named as part and the part value variable is going to store the value of the potentiometer. In the white set of function, you can see I have activated the serial communication and this time around, I only used it for the debugging purposes. The potentiometer is set as input. This line activates the OLED display module 0x3c is the I2C address. You can use the I2C scanner code to find this address. You can download that code from the article Anyway, then we clear the display and set the text color to white. In the void loop function, we simply read the potentiometer and store its value in the variable part value. And then using these instructions, we print this text and value on the OLED display module. You can set the font size and using the set cursor, you can select any position and using the display.print function, you can print strings and numbers on the OLED display module. I have already uploaded this program and now let's watch the OLED display module in action. Now let's move on to the next example. Get your Ultium 365 workspace activated because Ultium 365 provides a useful solution in cases when you are facing difficulties with your PCB design and unsure of your next step. You can share your project in Ultium Designer or on the web with any user in just a few clicks. You will have full control over who you want to give read-only access for let's say comments and design inspections and who you want to give read-write access to allow full global collaboration by a geographically dispersed team with editing performed through Ultium Designer. Let me show you how to share your project. Simply right-click on the project name and select Share. Write the user's email. 
Select read or write permissions from the drop down menu on the right and click on the share button. It's just that simple. I've added links to the Ultium Designer, Ultium 365 and Octopod, the world's fastest component search engine. In this 8th example, I'm going to explain how to use an IR sensor and buzzer with the Arduino. You'll need an IR sensor like this for obstacle detection, for making security systems, for making line following robots and even for making contactless control systems like for example a doorbell etc. In this example, what I want to do is I want the buzzer to turn on when the IR sensor detects any object. Instead of controlling a buzzer, you can also control a relay to control high voltage AC and DC loads. Anyway, this IR sensor has these two infrared LEDs. This white LED is used as the transmitter and this black color LED is used as the receiver. It transmits the infrared light which reflects from an object and when the receiver LED detects the reflected light, it knows there is something in front of the sensor and then it signals the Arduino. This IR sensor also has this blue color potentiometer which is used to set the range. It offers a long range when used against white color and reflective objects and it offers shorter range when used against black objects. That's why the IR sensor are most frequently used in line follower robots and you might have seen the black lines are usually drawn on a white paper or a surface that's more reflective than the black color. This IR sensor has a total of three wires which are clearly labeled with VCC ground and out. Connect the VCC and ground pins to the Arduino 5 volt and ground. Connect the out pin to the Arduino pin D10. The buzzer is connected to the Arduino pin D8 through this driver circuit. You can follow this circuit diagram and now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. I already explained seven examples and I'm sure now you can read this program and I'm sure now you fully understand how to define variables and how to use these built-in functions. Anyway, this program is quite similar to the digital input example in which I used a push button for reading the button clicks. And in that example, I clearly explained about different sensors that give zero or one at the output. In that example, I used the built-in pull-up resistor, but this time I didn't enable the pull-up resistor because the IR sensor I'm using pulls it to 5 volts. When the sensor detects anything, it gives 0 at the output and when there is nothing in front of the sensor, then it gives 5 volts at the output. So when the sensor gives you two states, then there is no need to activate the pull-up resistor. Rest of the program is almost the same. We simply read the pin status and then accordingly control the buzzer. I've commented all the instructions. I've already uploaded this program and now Let's watch the IR sensor and Arduino in action. Perfect. Now let's move on to the next example. In example number 9, we are going to cover two things, an LDR sensor and a 5-fold SPDT type relay. In previous example, we controlled a 5-fold buzzer and this time a 5-fold relay so that you can get the idea how to control high voltage loads. In this example, we are going to control this 110 or 220 volt AC light bulb. It's basically a day and night detection system. This bulb turns on and off depending on the light intensity. If the light falls below a certain threshold limit, the bulb turns on and vice versa. You know an LDR sensor is basically an analog sensor but this board is designed in a way that it gives 0 or 1 at the output when the light increases above or decreases below a set limit. So this is a digital LDR sensor and you can see this sensor board has a potentiometer which you can use to set the light intensity. This sensor has a total of 3 pins which are clearly labeled with D0, ground and VCC. Connect D0 pin to the Arduino digital pin D12. Connect the VCC and ground pins to the Arduino 5 volt and ground pins. My designed Arduino development board has a total of 4 relays but out of these 4 relays, I'm going to use only one relay and it's connected to the digital pin D4. You can also use a ready-made one channel relay module. You can follow this circuit diagram and now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. This program is just like the IR digital sensor program. 
almost all the basic digital sensors work in the same exact way. We simply define the pins and then tell the controller which pins are going to be used as the input and which pins are going to be used as the output. Then we use the digital read function to read the pin and then accordingly control the output. Instead of controlling the relay, we can aid code for the GSM module to send a text message or you can turn on a siren if in case you want to make a security system or you can turn on and turn off a DC or AC motor. It totally depends on you how you decide to use it. Anyway, I have already uploaded this program and now let's watch the day and night detection system in action. The 110 or 220 volt AC bulb is connected to the relay and you can see the Arduino is powered up. When the 110 or 220 volt AC supply is connected, never touch the relay contacts or copper traces on the top and bottom side of the PCB as it can be really dangerous. So as far as possible wear protective gloves and as a beginner I would recommend to perform such high voltage experiments in front of someone having basic knowledge of the electricity rules and regulations. So remember safety comes first. Two LEDs are on which means the light is falling on the LDR sensor. For the demonstration purposes I'm going to use the soft light as the sun. So when this light is on the bulb will remain off and when this light is turned off then the 110 or 220 volt AC bulb is going to turn on. Let me demonstrate this for you. If you replace this LDR sensor with NPIR motion sensor, you can build yourself an automatic corridor light controller or lone light controller or an automatic staircase light controller. Now let's move on to the next example. In this 10th example, I'm going to explain how to use the most popular HC-SR04 ultrasonic sensor with the Arduino and display the distance measurement value on the OLED display module. You can use an ultrasonic sensor for the obstacle detection and a robot. You can make a water level monitoring system and you can even make a security system. The HC-SR04 ultrasonic sensor uses sound waves to determine the distance between the sensor and an object. It emits an ultrasonic pulse and measures the time it takes for the pulse to bounce back after hitting an object. Since the speed of sound in air is relatively constant, you can calculate the distance by using the formula distance equals time into speed of sound divided by 2, where time is the time it takes for the ultrasonic pulse to travel to the object and back. Speed of sound is the speed at which sound travels in air approximately 343 meters per second at room temperature. It has a total of four pins clearly labeled as VCC, trigger, echo and ground. Connect the VCC and ground pins to the Arduino 5 volt and ground pins. Connect the trigger and echo pins to the Arduino D10 and D9 respectively. The SD1306 or LED display module VCC and ground pins are connected to the Arduino 3.3 volt and ground pins whereas the SDA and SCL pins are connected to the Arduino A4 and A5 pins which are the I2C pins. A4 is the SDA and A5 is the SCL. I have already explained this in the Arduino pinout. Anyway, you can follow this circuit diagram and now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. In the OLED display module example, I have already explained how to install these libraries. The trigger and echo pins of the ultrasonic sensor are connected to the digital pins D10 and D9. Next, I define two variables for storing the duration and distance values. All these instructions are used with the OLED display module and I have already explained these. The trigger pin is set as output and the echo pin is set as the input. The trigger pin is set to low to clear it to avoid any residual triggers. A short two microsecond delay is added. The trigger pin is set to high for 10 microseconds to trigger the ultrasonic pulse. The trigger pin is set back to low. Pulse and function is used to measure the duration for which the echo remains high which corresponds to the time taken for the sound wave to travel to the object and back. The distance is calculated using the formula and stored in the distance variable. The calculated distance is printed to the serial monitor. If you don't want to print values on the serial monitor then you can deactivate the serial communication and delete all these serial.println functions 
I used it only for the debugging purposes just to confirm that everything is working. Anyway, the OLED display module is cleared, text size is set to 2 and distance is printed at coordinates 0, 10 on the display. Text size is set to 3 and the calculated distance is printed at coordinates 0, 35 on the display along with the unit CM. Finally, the display content is updated using the display.display .display function. I've already uploaded this program and now let's watch the Arduino and ultrasonic sensor in action. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching. Ultim365 lets you invite users to your workspace so everyone can collaborate on projects and access the latest design revisions. To invite a user to the workspace, click the name of the workspace and select My Ultium 365 to open the workspace configuration in your browser. On the left side, select Workspace Members. Click the Invite Workspace Members button to start the invitation process. To invite a user, enter their email address in the Aid Members field. You can invite multiple users at the same time. Finally, you can add a note that users will see in the invitation. After entering all the necessary data, click the invite button to complete the process. Specify the administrator role for the invited user. Once a new team member accepts the invitation, they will have defined access to the workspace and can collaborate with other members. I have added links to the Ultium Designer, Ultium 365 and Octopart, the world's fastest component search engine. 